Hello my friends, today I would like to share with you my experiences with Panasonic G9, brand's flagship micro four thirds camera primarily designed for the needs of stills photographers. So in this video we will take a look at the handling, controls, image sensor performance, autofocus, video capabilities, image stabilization and the most important features of the G9. Starting with the handling, the G9 and GH5 or GH5S are so far the biggest micro four thirds cameras. If you want something small and portable, G9 probably won't be your first choice, but it definitely can be your first choice if you want the best possible handling and controls. For me, the overall ergonomics of the G9 are basically perfect. So far, I wasn't able to find anything that I would change in terms of handling and controls. The grip is very deep. I can fit all of my fingers on the grip. In terms of controls, on G9 we have front dial, rear dial and thumb dial. Shooting mode dial that can be locked by the button on the top. Underneath the shooting mode dial is drive mode dial with single shooting mode, two burst modes, 6K photo mode, post focus mode, timer and time lapse mode. Behind the front dial are dedicated buttons for white balance, ISO and exposure compensation and the video recording button. If you don't like the position of video recording button, it is not a big deal because in video mode you can start recording video by pressing the shutter button. I like that a lot and you can actually do that on very few cameras. On the front we have two customizable buttons. I use the upper button to toggle the magnification and the lower button for preview settings. There is also a very handy two position lever, you can set it to do a lot of things. I personally have it set to turn silent mode on and off. And here we also have PC sync port. On the back there is display button which was moved to the lower part instead of the upper part like on GH5 where it was easy to press it accidentally. The joystick is very useful for moving the focus points. You can also use it to navigate menu and when you press it the focus point will reset position to the center of the frame. Then there is focusing mode switch, AF slash LE lock button, which I have set to AF on for back button focusing. The playback button is located on the left side next to the button for switching between the display and the viewfinder. And on the right side, there is also button for setting autofocus area, quick menu button and menu button. The rotatable dial is also a four way pad and you can use it as four customizable function buttons. On the grip side is located remote control port and dual SD card port. Both SD card slots are UHS-2 compatible, so you can use those very fast UHS-2 cards and you can configure the cards however you want to. For example, you can have it write everything on both cards or ROS on card 1 and JPEGs and video on card 2. On the opposite side is the full-size HDMI port and USB 3.0 port, which can be used to charge the camera even when using micro USB cable. I'm really glad to have this option on G9. And yes, you can charge it using the power bank. Headphone jack is here as well and the mic jack is very well positioned and it will not block the display. G9 is also the only micro for a thirds camera at the moment to feature top plate LCD display. It shows all the important information about the exposure, white balance, metering, shooting format, about space left on both SD cards and also about how much power you have left in the battery in the camera and also in the grip if you have it attached. So far I quite like it, I could probably live without it, but I have actually found it to be a convenient way to check the settings. G9 uses DMW BLF19E batteries, same as GH5 for example. The battery life on G9 is really good, it is rated from 380 to 920 shots according to CIPA standards, depending on whether you use viewfinder or the display and how you set it up. For me, one battery is enough for my typical one day of hybrid shooting. You can also get a battery grip for G9, I should have mine soon, and that will basically double the battery life. The display is fully rotatable 3 inch touchscreen. It is the same 1 million dot display as on G85. It is very bright and sharp enough for checking focus, and even in bright sunlight it is still perfectly usable. Rotatable display is generally a very practical future, for example for shooting landscapes, for vlogging or for shooting at the waist level. G9 features a comprehensive weather sealing, it is splash proof, dust proof and freeze proof to minus 10 degrees as well. 
The viewfinder is one of the highlights of this camera. It is 3.68 million dots OLED panel with 100% coverage, 0.83 times magnification with 60 or 120 Hz refresh rate. This viewfinder is super sharp and it is actually so big that you have an option to use it in 0.77 or 0.70 times magnification if you find it to be too large. And there is also no blackout while shooting at 20 FPS with electronic shutter. Overall, this viewfinder is one of my most favorite features of the G9. G9 still uses 20.3 megapixel micro for a third sensor without anti-aliasing filter from GH5, but Panasonic claims 25% dynamic range improvement thanks to the changes in image processing algorithm. And I can definitely say that the dynamic range is really good on G9, Actually surprisingly good, I have compared it against Sony's excellent 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is known to have an excellent dynamic range. I will make a separate video about that. And on G9 it does not seem to be worse. Recovering shadows and highlights by plus 100 and minus 100 is not a problem. The picture will not fall apart in Canon style, there is no color shift and the amount of noise is very acceptable. At higher ISO values there is more noise of course, but up to ISO 1600 you have a lot of flexibility in editing. ISO 3200 is still usable for any kind of internet publishing and if you use a bit of noise reduction the results will be good. At ISO 6400 there is significant amount of noise, but with some noise reduction I was able to get somewhat usable picture with recovered highlights and shadows in this extremely difficult scene. But ISO 6400 is more like in case of emergency, for example, for documentary purposes. 20.3 megapixels is more than enough for me. It is definitely enough for all kinds of digital publishing, even if you need to make some cropping. The sharpness is excellent. There is a lot of detail, more than enough for me. Of course, the aspect ratio of this sensor is 4x3, which is either an advantage or disadvantage, depending on your preferred publishing format. I also like the color reproduction. These are the best colors that I have seen from Micro Four Thirds so far. The tones are very natural. Green looks very realistic, so no complaints here as well. Overall, I'm very impressed by the sensor performance of G9. I didn't expect it to be so good. Of course, if you intend to shoot at high ISOs, full frame will give you better results. But by Micro Four Thirds standards and even by APSC standards, it is an excellent sensor, and I will make a separate in-depth review of the performance of this sensor. G9 is also the first Panasonic camera to feature high-resolution mode, so it is capable of shooting 80.5 megapixel stills. It does that with the use of image stabilization by moving the sensor by half a pixel in each direction. So it takes eight pictures and it stitches the pictures in camera. It only takes about two seconds. It outputs RAWs or JPEGs or both. And you can import the final picture to the Lightroom just like regular photo. High resolution mode can only be used on tripod and it only works with still scenes. Otherwise there will be ghosting in the picture. And the amount of the detail that you can capture this way is truly amazing. It makes a huge difference and together with excellent color reproduction and a very good dynamic range, it actually makes this a very suitable camera for serious landscape shooters who are always using tripod and remote release because in those conditions the G9 can easily beat full frame DSLRs in terms of sharpness and the detail. The speed is also a priority with G9. It can do 9 frames per second with mechanical shutter and autofocus continuous, 20 frames per second with mechanical shutter and autofocus single, 20 frames per second with electronical shutter and autofocus continuous, and 60 frames per second with electronical shutter and autofocus single. All that is in RAW format, that makes it one of the fastest cameras on the market, and there actually isn't much of the rolling shutter while using the electronic shutter, there is also 6K and 4K photo option that is basically shooting 4x3 video and pulling still frames out of it as JPEGs, but I personally never use it on Panasonic cameras. Panasonic claims that G9's autofocus is the fastest on the market. It should be able to acquire focus in 0.04 seconds, which is 0.01 seconds faster than GH5 or Sony Hybrid AF. And in stills, it focuses instantly without any hesitation. 
Thanks to Panasonic's DFD technology, there is basically no going back and forth, which would be typical for contrast autofocus systems. It gets a bit slower in low light, but it is still reliable. I will make a separate video about focusing modes and tracking. So far, I like the autofocus in stills overall. In 225 area, it can predict really well where to focus. The tracking of moving subjects is really good as well. I intend to do some wildlife shooting with G9 later on and I will let you know how does it perform. Overall, I'm very happy with this autofocus so far. In-body image stabilization is definitely another highlight of the G9. It is rated for six and a half stops of stabilization. Together with Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, it is the most effective in-body image stabilization on the market. For the stills, it means that if you are shooting still scenes, you can go very low with shutter speed, especially when combined with dual IS2 compatible stabilized Panasonic lenses. One second is an easy job for in-body image stabilization at wide angles. With very steady position, you can do crazy five second handheld exposures, which kind of compensates for the ISO performance compared to the full frame. In video, it is basically the closest that you can get to the gimbal-like stabilization. The footage is just super smooth and thanks to the G9's body size, you can grip the camera properly. So it is an excellent camera for handheld shooting. Especially when shooting with ultra wide 7 to 14 mm f4 lens, I could actually believe that it is shot using gimbal. Regarding the video capabilities, G9 is actually still one of the most capable DSLR shaped video cameras on the market. It shoots up to 4K in 60p and it does so using the full sensor readout, which means that it downscales the video to 4K like GH5 or Sony A6500. So the 4K video quality is on par with GH5 and it is significantly better than on GH4 or G85. The sharpness is excellent and I really like the colors as well. It shoots 4K 60p in 150 megabits per second and in other 4K modes in 100 megabits per second. Very advanced features from GH5 and GH5S like VLOG, all intra codec or 10-bit video are not available in G9, but only very advanced users will use those. For majority of YouTubers, I would probably recommend G9 over GH5 for shooting video, unless you need to shoot clips longer than 30 minutes, which is G9's limit. And besides the improved in-body image stabilization, the main reason for that is the autofocus in video. Panasonic says that it is as good as on GH5, but honestly, I've never seen GH5 that would focus as well as G9. I was really surprised by the autofocus in video when I was making an unboxing video and it performed very well in very difficult scenario. It is quite fast and very reasonably reliable. In most situations it is hunting free, but it is not perfect yet. In difficult situations it still goes back and forth a bit. You can also tweak it in the settings. I'll make a separate video about autofocus as well, but so far I'm quite impressed considering that it is a contrast detection autofocus. Amount of rolling shutter is minimal, in real life shooting it will not be a problem like on Sony cameras and you will only be able to see it when shooting at long focal lengths. The menu is very user friendly and quite well organized, but once you set it up, you will actually spend minimum of time in menus since there is either button, lever or quick menu tab for everything important on G9. And there's also my menu tab where you can put the menu items that are the most important for you. To sum up, Panasonic G9 excels in terms of handling and ergonomics. The viewfinder is incredible and in terms of user experience, it is one of the best cameras overall. It is still a micro four thirds camera, which imposes some limitations, but in terms of dynamic range and color reproduction, it can easily match cameras with larger sensors. The performance at ISO about 3200 is the biggest limitation of G9. At the same time, it manages to exploit advantages of micro for a third sensor by having the most efficient image stabilization yet, high speed shooting capabilities and good battery life. The most surprising for me was the autofocus performance. In stills, it works great, although I have yet to test it in more difficult situation. While shooting video, the improvement is very significant. 
So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you'd like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.